Hey, this is Mr. Spencer. We're talking about the Great Gatsby here. What symbols in the book are most interesting to you? I want to talk about symbolism of colors. Which one seems most predominant to you? Green. We'll talk about this one first. Symbolism uses visual things to represent invisible things, which aim to show that the invisible mind and the ideas hidden in the visible things. Do you understand this? My notes here are only interpretation, state of assertively and with confidence, but symbolism is always subjective and not factual. You may have a better idea. So if I say this color symbolizes this, that's just an interpretation, but I'm trying to state it with confidence rather than say it may or it might or perhaps, which makes my argument sound weaker. I'm trying to be assertive. The most lasting color symbol in the book is green, and specifically the image of the green light. Green is the color of spring, which symbolizes confidence, vitality, and hope in many cultures. Green symbolizes Gatsby's original dream and hope, his ceaseless pursuit of his dream, and even the corruption of his dream and life. The green light burning all night occurs three times in the book. First, at the end of chapter one, Gatsby stretched out his arms. It looks like he's trembling to Nick. Okay, Nick didn't know that this was Gatsby yet. But his neighbor standing there alone again in the unquiet darkness. That's the end of chapter one when we first see him reaching for the green light. Okay, where does it happen again? Well, let's break this down first. First, at that passage at the end of chapter one, the green light we later find out is Daisy's dock. In Gatsby's eyes, the green light just represents Daisy, who is his lifelong pursuit and dream. He thinks that the reason why Daisy breaks up that their engagement and is married to rich Tom is that Gatsby was too poor. Notice that the color of money is also usually green. So Gatsby believes that he can win Daisy back only if he earns enough money, which is also true of F. Scott Fitzgerald with his courtship of his wife Zelda. Before they got married, she would not marry him until he made money, which he did with this first book, This Side of Paradise. All right, back to Gatsby and Daisy. He's full of hope at the time, and the green light is his hope and his dream. Though the light is minute, small, and far away, he believes that only if he tries his best to pursue it, he can touch the green light, hold his hope, realize his dream. But on the other hand, as the light is always minute, small, and far away, it symbolizes that Gatsby's dream is doomed to fail. It's an illusion. After the tea party in chapter 5, Gatsby shows Daisy, you always have a green light that burns all night at the end of your dock. Okay, The colossal significance of that light vanished forever, Nick notes. Nick notes that compared to the great distance that had separated him from Daisy, it had seemed very near to her, almost touching her. It had seemed as close as a star to the moon. Now it was again a green light, just an object, a light bulb on a dock. His count of enchanted objects had diminished by one. That's page 92 and 93. In Nick's narration, he comments that Gatsby had accumulated so many enchanted objects through his success, but while he may have captured Daisy's love here, the green light no longer is enchanted. It also implies that Gatsby has fully objectified Daisy. I'm not sure if Fitzgerald realizes this. He's a smart guy. He might. But objectifying this female character, viewing her as more of a concept or an object to be used rather than an individual with her own personal desires, dreams, freedom, or human flaws. Is she a perfect person? No. She's a human. She's flawed. All humans are flawed. This passage also maybe suggests a theme that the pursuit is often more thrilling than the realization of one's dreams. So as you chase your dreams, that's sometimes more exciting and satisfying than when you actually get it, which can be disappointing and a letdown. At the time in chapter 5, Gatsby has successfully shown his enormous fortune to Daisy, and Daisy begins to cry stormily on page 92 when she faces Gatsby's incredible wealth and the many color shirts he throws down. He had said to her, you always have that green light at the end of your dock. It seems that he is nearly realizing his dream in chapter 5 there, but he becomes lost in a deep reverie, a dreamy daydream, because of the significant difference between the real Daisy and his imaginary Daisy. So now the green light seems to have lost its original significance in the fascinating charm, which symbolizes the profound difference between the dream and reality and indicates that the American dream is beautiful in the imagination, but is fragile and imminently breakable in the reality of it. The American dream. It might be real, but it's easily broken. The last green light at the end of chapter 9 is on the last page. Nick says, as I sat there brooding on the old unknown world, I thought of Gatsby's wonder. 
when he first picked out the green light at the end of Daisy's dock. When did he first realize that? Nick says he'd come a long way to this blue lawn, and his dream must have seemed so close that he could hardly fail to grasp it. He did not know that it was already behind him. Somewhere back in that vast obscurity beyond the city, where the dark fields of the Republic rolled on under the night. Gatsby believed in the green light, Nick tells us, the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow, we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther, and one fine morning. So we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. Wasn't that last line also on Fitzgerald's tombstone? Did you not see it on your web quest when you looked up on his tombstone? Could that extra, extra long dash too represent a visual boat dock? Look, it's two dashes, the equivalent of four hyphens. Two long dashes there? I've never seen another author do that. What's the significance of that? We have all the floating and the boat docks. I'm wondering if it could be an extra long boat dock. Could that be what those extra long dashes represent? Perhaps, what does this mean? Fitzgerald, does he use it because it's Gatsby's jumping off point here as he goes into the afterlife? Or is it the reader's jumping off point to dive in? Is it Nick's jumping off point as he swims back to the Midwest and his old traditions? What could that extra, extra long dash signify? You could write a whole essay on it. I'd love to see you try. <sighs> Very interesting. With the death of Gatsby, the people who maintain faith in this light do not exist anymore, which indicates the disillusionment with the American dream that maybe Fitzgerald and others in the 1920s were starting to develop. The Roaring Twenties were going to stop at some point, and not a great Gatsby, but a great depression was just on the edge of the horizon. Gatsby believed in the green light. Well, if the disillusion of the dream, the green light also could represent new hope and the ceaseless struggle towards our dream, maybe there's something to learn from that. Even if the dream might not be real or is doomed to fail, should we still pursue perfection? Gatsby simply integrates his dream with love and wealth and gambles on Daisy, who many critics think is hollow, selfish, greedy, indifferent, at least from Nick's impression. In such a society, where it's full of materialism, carefree hedonism, and moral decadence, Gatsby's pursuit of the dream on the spiritual level is incompatible with the social environment that he lives in. Thus, Gatsby's dream, his American dream, about winning back Daisy is doomed to become corrupted in modern-day America. It's inevitable. White occurs many times in the novel, and it's closely associated with Daisy. White represents the immaculate and the pure beauty. It symbolizes nobility and purity in many cultures. Daisy wears white dresses when she meets Gatsby for the first time, as well as when Nick visits her in East Egg. At the age of 18, she dressed in white and had a white car, which made her charming in the eyes of the young officers, as Jordan tells the story at the end of chapter four. Her house is full of the color of white. For example, the windows were ajar and gleaming white against the fresh grass outside in chapter one, page seven and eight. Even her name, Daisy, is also kind of a white flower. Thus, it may easily make people feel that she's pure and flawless and innocent and noble when people meet her for the first time. And this is why Gatsby's infatuated with her and regards her as a pure beauty. Is Daisy pure, though? I'm not sure. Daisy's a very interesting, complex character. Don't write her off as a one-dimensional, impure, hollow shell of a person. White actually symbolizes, in many cases throughout the book, emptiness, vacuity, like a vacuum, superficiality, ruthlessness, and a selfishness to a great extent. Describing Daisy with the color of white indicates that under the pure and beautiful appearance, Daisy owns a superficial, hollow, cold, and selfish heart inside. Her life is full of nothing except luxury, and she wastes every day in boringness and loneliness. For example, she once cried, what do we do with ourselves this afternoon, and the day after that, and the next 30 years? Thus, she represents the hollow and the superficial upper class. What is more, although Gatsby's run out of all his youth and passion for her, even sacrificing its life, Daisy shows no grief for his death, but just goes out for traveling with her husband, which reveals her selfish and indifferent personality. Ultimately, 
Daisy represents the spirit and the mood of the jazz age, the roaring 20s, and the hypocritical values and the moral standards of the bourgeois, which is a French word for the class of people who own most of the social wealth. And Americans usually use the word bourgeois to mean super fancy, too fancy, too classy. White implies that Although the upper class is rich in their material life, they are quite poor and decadent in their spiritual life, in their own morality and sense of right and wrong. They're irresponsible and insensitive to the society, to their life, and to other people. White symbolizes Daisy's emptiness, superficiality, hypocrisy, ignorance. Whereas Gatsby regards Daisy as his dream, so it indicates that his dream is elusive and maybe worthless. And it also implies that his American dream is doomed to be corrupted in this modern age. Daisy's such an interesting and complex character, though. One could also argue that the emptiness and superficiality is only seen from Nick's point of view. Nick is the one describing Daisy. Nick has very few private interactions with her, and the ones he does have with Daisy, like the beautiful little fool and sophisticated, God, I'm sophisticated passage on page 17, are ambiguous and vexing enough to lend themselves to a deeper exploration of her complexity. Maybe the color white symbolizes purity, but Daisy's purity was contaminated or tainted by the pressures of upper class society. This could be a counter argument to the previous. Or her purity was tampered with by the constraints of her gender. What a woman can do became an evolving definition in the 1920s. The right to vote, flappers, women smoking, women acting out in society and exercising their new rights. Hmm. Red. Red, the color associated with blood, it's also a symbol of violence, danger, and rage. It may also symbolize impending or inevitable danger. Red is glimpsed first in chapter one where Nick has bought a dozen books on finance. He's getting into the bond business with stocks and Wall Street. And his books are red and gold standing on the shelf. He says, I bought a dozen volumes on banking and credit and investment securities and they stood on my shelf in red and gold like new money from the mint, promising to unfold the shining secrets that only Midas, gold, and Morgan, Chase Morgan, and Mycenaeus knew. Look into some of your ancient Greek and Latin figures here. Chase and J.P. Morgan, though, those are rich people from the 20th century, Fitzgerald writing about. I had the high intention of reading many other books besides. The gold color of these books represents money. While the gold is associated with red here, it also means that the worship and the obtainment of money is closely associated with blood and violence in that age. On the other hand... When Nick left Daisy's house, he saw in front of the wayside garages where new red gas pumps sat out in pools of light, page 20. Fitzgerald uses the color red and the word pool, indicating the ending of a story, maybe when Gatsby dies in the swimming pool. Here, red presents the blood of Myrtle, maybe the blood pooling under her body when she's hit by a car, when she dies in front of the gas station in the Valley of Ashes at the end of Chapter 7, or the blood of Gatsby who shot in the swimming pool. Red and white are fundamental tones of color in Daisy and Tom's house. Nick notes, their house was even more elaborate than I expected, a cheerful red and white Georgian colonial mansion overlooking the bay. Since white symbolized personality characteristics of Daisy, red can show Tom's individual characteristics like selfishness, arrogance, barbarousness, and cruelty. Note the color here on page 7 and 8 when we're first introduced to their house. We walked through a high hallway into a bright rosy colored space, fragilely bound into the house by French windows at either side. Then, it says, rippled over the wine-colored rose. Rug. That's going to be a red color. The colors of red and white. Why rose and rosy colored objects so often? Okay, Daisy says, I love to see you at my table, Nick, in chapter one. You remind me of a rose, an absolute rose, doesn't he? She turned to Jordan. An absolute rose? This was untrue, Nick narrates. I am not even faintly like a rose, he says on page 14. Back on page 11, it says that they went on to a rosy colored porch. And then Daisy comments that, oh man, I always try to watch for the longest day of the year. Do you always watch for the longest day of the year? Is it around the summer solstice? But you miss it, that sunset? I always watch for the longest day of the year and then I miss it. When is the sun going to set on Daisy? When's the sun going to set on Gatsby? When's the sun going to set on the American dream? Sunsets often are orange and red. From page 17, there's a crimson room that Nick notices in chapter one. Uh, crimson, rose, red. What could this symbolize what could it mean all right on the next part 
beginning of chapter four, rose and rosy colored objects. One person says at the beginning of chapter four, describing people at Gatsby's parties, he's a bootlegger. She's got cocktails and his flowers. One time he killed a man. Nephew to von Hindenburg, second cousin to the devil. What color is the devil? Then she says, reach me a rose, honey, and pour me a last drop into that there crystal glass. In some ancient Greek myths, roses were associated with Adonis, the lover of Aphrodite, whose blood from the first red roses were said in this Greek myth to have grown. Roses thus became symbolic of love that transcended even death and of resurrection itself. Could Daisy's love resurrect Gatsby's dying dream, perhaps? Nick narrates the beginning of chapter 7 in Tom and Daisy's house. Gatsby stood in the center of a crimson carpet in chapter 7. And then a tiny gust of powder rose from her bosom into the air. Crimson, a dark red color often associated with blood. Could this be foreshadowing the end of chapter 7 and Myrtle's bloody death? Or Gatsby's own impending and bloody death in chapter 8? Notice too how the word rose is used as a verb here, as in to raise up. But... Is it too much to suggest that Fitzgerald uses this word here to remind us of other previous associations with a rose? What else could the color red symbolize? It's used so many times throughout the book. Tom's carpet, Catherine's hair, Myrtle's sister in chapter two, the blood from Myrtle's nose in chapter two when Tom hits her in the face, the blood on Gatsby's car after he's trying to wash it off after he hits Myrtle. The red falling leaves at the end of the novel in the last few pages by Gatsby's house. Gatsby's suit is pink in chapter 7. There's a red circle on the water in the swimming pool when he dies in chapter 8. Could Daisy's love resurrect Gatsby's dying dream, I wonder? Could Gatsby and Daisy's love transcend and persist even beyond death? Or can the American dream live on even after Gatsby's death? In Christian symbolism, the red rose stood for the blood shed by Jesus on the cross, and thus for God's love in many Judeo-Christian interpretations. Is Gatsby martyred or sacrificed similar to the death of Jesus in the Judeo-Christian stories? Did Gatsby have to die for his dream to live on? Or did Gatsby have to die in karmic response to Myrtle's death? She died, so Gatsby does have to die too. Myrtle Wilson her life violently extinguished, knelt in the road, and mingled her thick, dark blood with the dust. Gray, red, mixing together. Myrtle died. Gatsby died. Is he a martyr? Is he a Christ figure? I'm curious about your interpretations of this. <sighs> Daisy, the green light. As Nick describes Gatsby's murder at the end of chapter 8, he says, I have an idea that Gatsby himself didn't believe it would come, and perhaps he no longer cared. If that was true, then he must have felt that he had lost the old warm world, paid a high price for living too long with the single dream. He must have looked up at an unfamiliar sky through frightening leaves and shivered as he found what a grotesque thing a rose is and how raw the sunlight was upon the scarcely created grass. Grotesque? A rose? Do roses represent Gatsby's dream for Daisy? Grotesque means extremely ugly or a distorted figure. Like beauty, will a rose eventually fade away and die and become some grotesque thing? Like any flower, or Daisy, will it become stale sooner rather than later? And as summer ends in the novel, as summer ends in Gatsby's life, does fall and autumn arrive signaling inevitable death? and the fall of the great American Gatsby. Red, rose, crimson, blood, the American dream, red, white, and blue. What other colors can we talk about? Well, what about yellow? Yellow is the color of gold, which symbolizes money, materialism, and a high social position throughout the novel. In Western culture, the yellow color is the color that the aristocratic class used to decorate themselves, like gold jewelry. So it represents wealth and noble identity. So in order to win Daisy back, Gatsby chooses the yellow color to decorate himself and his house to show that he had been one member of the rich craft class. Is he posing, though? Gatsby naively thinks that Daisy has never loved anyone else except him. He engages himself in norming enormous wealth to win his losing love back. 
After owning enough money, Gatsby keeps himself in a golden world to show his wealth to Daisy. His golden tie, yellow car, golden toilet set, and even his golden food and music in his lavish parties. What is more, Dr. T.J. Eckelberg's enormous spectacles are yellow. Thus, all of these yellow and golden things indicate that the Jazz Age is an age where everyone shows great worship of money and where the materialism is so fashionable that even God cannot avoid its influence. The yellow color is the color of autumn leaves, which symbolizes decay, death, destructive power of nature. Before Gatsby was shot by Wilson, it was depicted that he refused the chauffeur's help and he disappeared among the yellowing trees in a moment, which indicated his death. And his yellow car not only ends Miss Wilson's life, but also eventually leads to his death when George kills Gatsby for killing Myrtle. But it is Daisy who actually leads to Gatsby's tragedy. So this color also could indicate the failure of the American dream. Yellow not only gives him confidence, but also destroys his dream in life. The luster of gold fades away to a yellow the failure of the American dream. The most obvious color symbol in the book, though, is blue, like on the book cover. Blue represents tranquility, melancholy, loneliness, and fantasy. If the color yellow is the color to show Gatsby's outer self, the blue color, which is full of sadness and fantasy, indicates Gatsby's real inner self, lonely, sorrowful, fanciful. In the novel, Gatsby's garden is described as blue, such as the blue garden, the blue livery occurring in chapter 3, the blue leaves occurred in chapter 8, the blue lawn that occurred in chapter 9. The blue tone of Gatsby's garden reveals Gatsby's loneliness and melancholy in his inner heart, his spiritual garden. He holds lavish parties in his blue garden to allure Daisy, attract her, but he fails, which makes him become more sad, lonely, and melancholy, at least until chapter 5. Though holding the luxurious parties, he never takes part in them. He never even drinks alcohol because the real Gatsby cannot merge himself with those wealthy people and the tranquility in his inner heart is contrary to the noise and the absolute cacophony of his parties. He can't merge or conflate the two. Blue also symbolizes the fantasy and the illusion of dreams. When the blue color is used to describe Gatsby, it indicates that Gatsby is full of beautiful fantasy and illusion towards his dream, Daisy. Gatsby believes firmly that Daisy loves him sincerely in the depth of her heart all the time, and he will own Daisy one day in the future with his enormous wealth and true love. In the end of the novel, when Nick sees the blue smoke of leaves in the air, he realizes that the disillusionment of the American dream is inevitable in such a roaring 20s age. After Gatsby's death, the East was haunted for me like that, Nick writes near the end of the book, distorted beyond my eye's power of correction. Can I correct the dream? Can I correct my lenses? So when the blue smoke of brittle leaves was in the air and the wind blew the wet laundry stiff on the line, I decided to come back home, he says on page 176 in chapter 9. So Nick decides to come back home to the Midwest where he can reorient himself within a more traditional morality. Gray, last one I'll look at here, is the color tone that rules the whole novel. It symbolizes decadence, bleakness, corruption, and disillusionment, and represents moral decay, a spiritual emptiness, and death. The Valley of Ashes is a gray place where everything is colored gray. For instance, page 23, fantastic farm, the grotesque gardens, the chimneys and rising smoke, the powdery air crumbling. There are also gray cars crawling along an invisible track and ash gray men on page 23 swarming up with laden spades gray is a dirtier version of white purity might be tainted in the modern era of the 1920s and only daisy or myrtle or some of these bright colors are a sign of hope within the gray dirty vision of the modern valley of ashes the world in the 1920s what about the world in the 2020s after Miss Wilson's death, Wilson's gray eyes turned out to the ash heaps, George, where small gray clouds took on a fantastic shape. Nick narrates from the investigation of what George Wilson did at the end of chapter 8. Page 159. This indicates George Wilson's painful state of mind and his determination to kill the owner of the yellow car. Living in the world of money worship, people's spirit is empty and moral is decay. And if they are living in a lifeless desert where they are putting up in a last ditch struggle for their life hopelessly, Gatsby's killed 
By an Ashton in a fantastic figure, the gray George Wilson, and the appearance of this gray figure just indicates Gatsby's disillusionment and death. It also means that all things, including Gatsby's dream and life, are ended in the bleak and gloomy tragic gray atmosphere. There are many variations of color used throughout the book, just as gray and silver are a variation of black and white mixed. Pink, like the color of Gatsby's suit in Chapter 7, is a variation of white and red, like the House of Tom and Daisy. Gold is a darker variation of yellow, just as green, or as Machalis thinks of the death car in Chapter 7, as light green is a variation of yellow. On page 92, the colors all overwhelmed Daisy. He took out a pile of shirts and began throwing them one by one. Shirts of sheer linen and thick silk and fine flannel, which lost their folds as they fell and covered the table in many colored disarray. So many colors. While he admired, while we admired, he brought more in the soft, rich heat mounted higher. Shirts with stripes and scrolls and plaids and coral and apple green and lavender and faint orange with monograms of Indian blue. Why so many specific, particular colors? Daisy starts crying. They're such beautiful shorts. Shirts. She cries stormily, sobbing, her voice muffled in the thick folds. It makes me sad because I've never seen such such beautiful shirts before. Is Daisy lost in symbolism and artifice? Is she lost in the many colored disarray? <sighs> what do you think? Are there any other color symbols you'd explore? There's no purple in the book, but there is lavender. Silver, what do you think that color could mean? Okay, your final essay is coming up. What are you going to write about? I will give you a prompt, but you could incorporate color symbolism into your thesis statement. This is Mr. Spencer signing off. Thanks for joining me.